हेलो एवरीवन हेलो एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल एंड आई आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक्स फॉर योर टाइम प्रेजेंस इन टूडेज वेबिनार सो नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द वेबिनार सो दिस वेबिनार हैज बीन डिवाइडेड इन टू थ्री थ्री पार्ट्स एज यू ऑल ऑलरेडी नो uh for those who have joined us uh before so in the first part we will uh, conduct the webinar and in the second part we will uh, held the dem- uh, question and answer session uh, where you will ask the questions from the speaker regarding topic and our speaker will try his best to give you answer all uh, those questions and in the last part uh, we will start the a distribution certificate process and there you will get the link feedback form link uh, which you have to fill in order to get certificate so please uh, connect with us till end now i welcome the speaker or uh, today's speaker hello sir hello everyone good evening i am velu from india sir can you hear my voice sir Yes, sir. You are audible. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you, sir. I am Velu from India. Uh, I have been working in a college for the past seven years. Uh, I did my both undergraduate and postgraduate in University of Madras. So I am very much interested to deliver a lecture on this. That is a webinar. The topic: Literature is mirror of society. especially modern english to sorry from middle english to modern english poetry at the end of the session when you have any doubt you can ask actually it is like a discussion so when you have any doubt immediately you can uh, type in chat box the objective of webinar see we have to know about the objective because that's very important generally we have to know what is uh, literature literature we have a number of uh, meaning literature is imagination literature is composed of books literature is human life literature is beyond something so the main objective of this webinar is to interpret literature both personally and then historically some of the authors poi that can be poets essayist or dramatist maximum number of the authors they conveyed their message historically on the basis of society but very few authors such as william wordsworth john keats samuel taylor coleridge lord byron they expressed poetry personally so that we have to study analyze every author's best works in fact every author work is best but selected author we are going to discuss in this webinar to know how authors made attempt to reflect society in their literature in directly we cannot convey message or directly we cannot satire or attack anybody but through literature we can convey it history we have to write the fact philosophy we have to write the moral but in literature particularly poetry we can talk about anything which was said by philip sidney in his work apology for poetry the next slide introduction literature is expression of life through the medium of language we can express it through a language already i told you it is composed of books which are great human interest literature is personal experience we can share our personal openly it is dealing with the social world we are actually we are discussing this topic social world order nature and humans relationship what is the relationship between text and the human what is the relationship with the human and then nature everything we can see in literature 
the great writers modified the language according to the development of society because the middle age chaucer who used a different language that is uh, uh, midland dialect next shakespeare used a different language in his sonnets and then philip sidney milton dryden pope the last t is eliot so they were using different different language according to the society the proper study of literature study of history study of biography of author when we read about biography of author we will come to know how they shaped their literature next one is idea of age and then society it is necessary to grasp main political historical and then social changes of country before venturing forth to studying its literature so through the literature we can know the political the historical and even social changes in english literature we have many changes because of protestantism catholicism then commonwealth period puritanism and then the social changes we can see in literature literature is product of society cannot existed in vacuum yes of course we can see society in literature literature is society and vice versa society is reflected in the literature of its period great writers of this period have impact upon society to which they belong sometimes they expressed openly sometimes indirectly yes of course literature and society are inextricably linked together english history is our nation's biography its literature is autobiography which was said by wh hudson it's actually a wonderful quotation english history is our nation's biography but literature is autobiography literature is ccd of society which was uh, actually it's my point literature is an ocean we have to read with passion literature can capture everything in autobiography the biography we can see openly literature is ccd of society literature is an ocean because it's a broad so we have to read it with passion before we discuss about uh, poetry especially modern english as i am sorry middle english poetry to modern english poetry we have to talk about the difference between poem and poetry poem is nothing but arrangement of words and contain meaning and musical instruments poetry is process of creating literary piece using metaphor meter rhyme are used in poem but not in poetry which was said by samuel taylor coleridge in his work biographia literaria chapter number 14 so he says that the different between poetry and poem is meter when we see meter and rhyme that is considered as poem poetry is almost it's like a prose composition types of poetry generally we know that out elegy sonnet ballad epic satire from middle english to modern english literary periods because our topic is uh, literature is mirror of society from middle english to modern english poetry especially even we have many reflection in drama also fiction also but exactly in poetry we can see so we are going to discuss from middle english the age of elizabeth the puritan age periods of restoration 18th century literature the age of romanticism the victorian age 20th century literature then contemporary literature middle age through the middle age we can find out even we don't uh, need to read about uh, history when we read a poetry poetry is a history we can know the history of a country through poetry that is the main concept of this webinar so in middle english national movement separating england from political ties of france and ecclesiastical bondage 
to Rome, the French language lost, lost its official prestige. English became the speech. Parliament and common people. During Middle English, that is Anglo-Norman period, <clears throat> France ruled over England. During that time, they spread French language. After that, we can come to know through poetry. Later, English became a speech in court, even in parliament, and then among common people. That's why I started with Middle English. William Langland, who is one of the famous poets in Middle English, along with Chaucer, he expressed a social discontent in his poetry. As I told you already, we don't need to read or study of history of country, history of period. When we read a poetry, we can come to know what is the history of the country. So, William Langland expressed social content, social uh, discontent, preaching the equality of land. Land accusation happened during uh, Middle English. The dignity of labor, and talked about dignity of labor also. In his famous work, Pierce the Plowman, which was written in alliterative verse, the main theme of the Pierce the Plowman is dream or vision in search of good and truth, corruption in the church. Particularly, that is the main theme of Pierce the Plowman. So, what do we come to know through this poetry during the Middle English, during William Langland period? Uh, corruption ha occurred in church. So, again, we don't need to refer any history of England, but when we read a poetry, we can come to know corruption happened in Middle English. Go over one more author criticize a vigorous life. Chaucer shared the stirring life of his times because England was confusing with the France, Italy, and some other countries. Chaucer in his poetic drama, Roman of the Rose, showed people characteristics such as love, hate, envy, jealousy, then idleness. It's actually a, it's a nature of human being. Not only a Chaucer period, even now people are like this only, but during Chaucer period, that is Middle English period, people were involved in love, hate, envy, jealousy, and idleness. So Chaucer expressed love, hate, envy, jealousy in his Roman and the Rose. So when we read this poetry, we will come to know people lead their life like this. Chaucer in his Canterbury Tales, which is a masterpiece of Chaucer, gave us a picture of contemporary English life, its work, and then play, its deeds, and dreams, sympathy, hearty, joy, living, everything. So when we read a Canterbury Tales of Chaucer, we will come to know the people character, the society situation, how society was leading their life. First, Chaucer is the first English writer to bring atmosphere of romantic interest about the men and women. Because before Middle English, we had an Old English, that is a Beowulf poetry. But Beowulf poetry was talking about a war. The first time, Chaucer is the first writer who talked about a romantic interest about the men and then women. Moreover, already we know that he is the father of English poetry. Next, the age of Elizabeth. The age of Elizabeth can be called 16th century, Renaissance period, age of Elizabeth, age of Shakespeare. Age of Elizabeth in William J. Long book. In William, I mean W.H. Hudson book, it has been given uh, Age of Shakespeare. So, during the Age of Elizabeth, Edmund Spencer, who is considered as a poet's poet, was a prominent poet who wrote Fairy Queen, tells the story of conflict, represent of life as a struggle between good and evil. Queen Elizabeth is a fairy queen. You know, in this poetry is considered as a Protestant church. Jews are represent Mary Queen or Catholicism. Generally, we know that their 
we had a conflict between uh, protestantism and then roman catholic because the father of queen elizabeth henry 8 wanted to marry second time so that he must have a son next generation but the roman catholic church protested him immediately henry 8 protested roman catholic so edmund spencer wanted to convey the message of the conflict and confusion between uh, catholicism and then protestantism he identifies true religion with the english protestantism because uh, i mean uh, the tudor period that is uh, tudor generation tudor family henry 8 queen elizabeth mary uh, they supported protestantism so when we read this poetry fairy queen we can see the society in fairy queen next puritan age in fact we had one more author shakespeare but he expressed protestantism catholicism in his drama but our topic is only in poetry so puritan age puritan age can be called the age of milton <clears throat> during puritan age greatest moral and political reform was swept over nation because people had to go for church in fact drama theater was closed people uh, were restricted going to cinema in, uh, i mean uh, drama than any other activities entertainment the political upheaval of the period summed up in the trouble between king and the parliament because some people were supporting for charles james and then charles some people were supporting for parliament what is oliver cromwell religiously age was one of the even greater ferment than which marked the beginning of reformation reformation revival of religion poetry took new on the starting forms in john dun and then herbert even though john milton was a famous along with john milton john dun george herbert were famous poets who talked about puritan period the country was divided by the struggle between political religious liberty see the previous age that is in queen elizabeth age the conflict between protestantism and then catholicism but in the puritan age we had a conflict between political and then religious liberty the puritan age when we continue puritan was stamped with uh, john milton john milton who wrote a paradise lost on the basis of bible it is a satire reference to the pleasure loving especially uh, in his book 9 is talking about the obedience of god moreover he wrote one more elegy lycidas in which he talks about corrupt anglican church christian shepherd because of puritanism usually in pastoral elegy we have a shepherd but here as it is puritan period milton has given lycidas christian shepherd as it is a puritan age so during puritan age john dun george herbert poetry and then john milton poetry expressed a society another important poet in puritan age is george herbert who wrote temple the main theme of this collection of poetry temple is church holidays ceremonials experience of christian life john dun and john milton are prominent poets of age one of the metaphysical poets robert herrick also published religious poetry so in puritan age only struggle between political and then religious liberty moreover number of poets were writing about uh, only religion and then after puritan period we had restoration period during restoration period uh, after commonwealth we have a restoration period during restoration period charles ii became a king after oliver cromwell that is uh, after commonwealth so charles ii during this period uh, we have a natural pleasure is corruption in society see even 
we have corruption in middle age also middle age pierce the plowman talk about corruption in church that is which was written by william langland similarly in restoration period we have corruption in society in middle english corruption in church in restoration corruption in society A restoration writer painted realistic picture of corrupt court and then society maximum they talked about corruption in society many poets express expressed directness and then simplicity very openly they talked about corruptness uh, i mean uh, corruption both good and evil tendencies reflected in the society you can see both good and then evil this period is intellectual rather than imaginative or emotion the period is a maximum they are talking about intellectual than imagination so in spring i mean uh, 1665 the plague appeared in london destroying about uh, 68000 people the favorite uh, nursery rhyme ring o oh, ring roses the pocket full of poses during the restoration period um, school i mean uh, kindergarten rhyme nursery rhyme uh, was written of uh, restoration period so through this rhyming also we will come to know uh, england <coughs> uh, was suffering from plague and then even great fire the most prominent writer in restoration period is john dryden so john dryden generally we know that he is a prose writer poet dramatist even a critic so he's actually a multi talented person really he is one of the inspired poet so first time is writing a poetry asterix and red x is welcoming to charles ii because restoration period is which was ruled over by charles ii so he is welcoming in his first poetry and then in his second poetry anas mirabils is talking about great fire in london next in third poetry religio laici which is based on a latin defending the anglican church against catholic because since the 16th century since henry 8th period 16th century 17th century many people were against catholic the reason is they followed protestantism so in his poetry is defending anglican church against catholic now what happened is during john dryden period james ii became a king immediately kingdom was changing so john dryden immediately turned into catholic and wrote religion poem that is hind and the panther hind is referred roman church panther anglican now he is supporting roman catholic see during charles ii period he was against catholic during james ii period he is supporting roman catholic so throughout this poetry asterix and redex we can see welcoming to charles ii second poetry anas mirabilis we can see the terror of great fire in london religio laici we can see defending anglican church against catholic the next he, yeah, he was writing hind and panther about uh, roman church and then anglican next he is mocking at the uh, whig party that is political party he is mocking at political parties the whig and tory were famous political parties during the restoration period so john dryden who was a prominent writer when we read about this poetry we can see the total restoration period because in his first poetry we can see welcoming charles ii in the second poetry we can see great fire in london in third poetry he is defending anglican church but against the catholic and again he is against uh, i mean he is turning into catholic uh, he is against uh, anglican church he is writing hinden panther so through john dryden poetry we can see restoration period the next 18th century 
that is that can be called a neoclassical period or augustan age or the age of alexander pope so this can be called a 18th century augustan age or neoclassical age or alexander pope because they followed a classical such as virgil ovid so during that period king emperor augustus ruled over so that's why this period is called the augustan age the end of long struggle for political freedom in england the political freedom in the sense whig and tory party and then uh, puritanism and then commonwealth that is commonwealth newspaper magazines became chief instrument of a nation's progress newspaper and then magazines so, such as rambler by samuel johnson spectator by addison tatler by steel so newspaper magazines became chief instrument of a nation's progress alexander pope who was considered as a prominent poet in 18th century who polished the literature but artificial so they depended on classical period they followed they referred classical words classical names satire was famous attacking other satire was famous maximum they used intellectual than imagination so during restoration period also uh, restoration writers such as uh, particularly john dryden uh, they used intellectual rather than imaginative similarly in the 18th century also they used intellectual than imagination poetry was limited in this century because satire essay newspaper magazines were famous even though alexander pope was a famous poet alexander pope's rape of the lock is a masterpiece it's a long poem in which all the mannerism of society are picturized and satirized with the most delicate wit so when we read rape of the lock we can see the 18th century people of england it expresses the artificial life of the age such as courts parties tea drinking snuff taking idle vanities so people were wandering here and there in fact they were playing cards they were involving in parties tea drinking in fact the coffee house was famous during restoration period 18th century period some incident which occurred in the roman catholic society alexander pope who belonged to roman catholic he was actually a precocious writer a uh, one more author john gay in his work trivia he describes about the london streets humorously so when we read this poetry trivia we can see the london street so through alexander pope the rape of the lock we can see the london society all the mannerism of society such as courts party tea drinking and so on next after augustan period that is uh, neo classical period we have uh, the age of romanticism the age of romanticism this can be called mystic period or age of samuel johnson or pre romantic period so age of romanticism this age in other aspect is called age of johnson because during this period samuel johnson was famous poet essayist samuel johnson in his poetry london is talking about the parliamentary reports but he did not belong to parliament but he is talking about parliamentary report so when we read this poetry london we can come to know that what is the main points or what happened in parliament one more author oliver goldsmith deserted village is talking about social commentary rural depopulation decline of village immigration to america moral corruption so so longest poem deserted village oliver goldsmith even though he is a 
great dramatist he, uh, he wrote uh, deserted village the main topic social commentary that is uh, rural depopulation decline of village immigration to america so most people emigrated to america and is talking about moral corruption also so once again when we recollect during middle age uh, we have corruption in church uh, during um, restoration period corruption in society but during uh, age of romanticism corruption in moral in fact england people lost moral thomas gray though he talks about personal but he is discussing about a different between city and village life thomas gray his famous elegies elegy written in a country churchyard it can be a subjective poetry but he is talking is portraying the society one more author last but not least is a william blake in his poem songs of an innocence and experience one of the poetry chimney sweeper is talking about dark background of child labor poorly clothed so during that period many children were sent to industry so he's talking about the child labor issue so see the changes of society from middle english there is a different issues during elizabethan age they had a different issues that is different i mean the conflict the struggle between uh, protestantism and then catholicism during a uh, puritan period they had a different issues similarly the age of romanticism they have uh, different issues that is background of child labor poorly clothed so even in oliver goldsmith period we can see rural depopulation so deserted village so village step by step was destroying the age of romanticism that is the second part this can be called age of uh, wordsworth <clears throat> during this period george free ruled over england so that can be called early 19th century late 18th century second part of romantic period so during this period french revolution was uh, famous wordsworth talk about common life country life pb shelley talks about philosophy actually we have uh, many poets uh, novelist during age of romanticism such as william wordsworth john keats pb shelley lord byron and the novel said charles dickens they were talking about uh, as far as the poetry is concerned they were talking about subjective poetry that is personal issue even though some of the poets were talking about um, uh, countries issues such as common life country life next in the victorian age lord tennyson and then matthew arnold are famous poets in the victorian age one more author that is uh, robert browning but lord tennyson and then matthew arnold famous poets in the victorian age lord tennyson wrote a princess which is actually longest poem is about his answers to the question of women's rights which was strongly agitating public mind so in his poetry princess he wants to talk about women's right so what do we come to know so from romantic period even a victorian period women writer were restricted to write novel also for example charles brontë brontë sisters they were restricted to publish a novel so tennyson wanted to talk about women's right in his poetry princess what do we come to know automatically through the poetry we can see the society so that's why we are discussing literature's mirror of society especially through poetry matthew arnold who wrote dover beach reflects loss of religious faith loss of religious faith we had a religious faith in middle english even in the elizabethan age even puritan period restoration period but step by step slow 
very slowly people started losing religious faith because of advent of technology and then science human being away from religious because of science people started concentrating on science technology people started going to industry people moreover people started uh, going to industry so they did not want to go for drama theater that's why novel was introduced novel was introduced so during this period religious uh, people lost religious faith next in the 20th century t s eliot completed the work the wasteland in wasteland is talking about state of contemporary world modern people psychological state of humanity europe lost entire gen- generation of young men this illusionment about the current state of affairs in modern society people started walking very fast they were rushing in fact they did not have time to concentrate or to enjoy nature they did not have anything so he is talking about the state of contemporary world so the wasteland is a masterpiece of uh, t s eliot is talking about the contemporary people contemporary issues i mean psychological issues of uh, young generation particularly next we had w b eats also he is talking about uh, 20th century even though he belonged to irish i mean ireland so during contemporary literature many poets talk about modern technology <clears throat> even computer and so on even some early contemporary poets write about slave war and then race some early contemporary poets write about uh, slave war and racism now currently during a pandemic situation uh, even many writers are uh, writing about uh, covid 19 also so from the beginning when we talk about once again the first period that is uh, middle english through the middle english chaucer william langland even the elizabeth during elizabeth period uh, edmund spenser puritan period john milton even john dunn restoration period john dryden and 18th century alexander pope during age of romanticism samuel johnson and then romantic period william wordsworth victorian age lord tennyson 20th century uh, t s eliot when we talk about other literature such as afro american literature we had one more author that is maya angelo she is talking about uh, color issue that is racism between afro america and then america because uh, generally we know that the american people are white but afro american is black so she is talking about the color in her famous poetry i know why the caged bird she is talking about uh, color issues and then uh, uh, some of the authors in contemporary literature talking about the slave so the finally when we sum up see w h hudson who wrote an outline history of english literature is divided i mean uh, he divided a century as age of chaucer age of shakespeare age of milton age of dryden age of pope age of johnson age of wordsworth age of tennyson um William J Long in his uh, book English literature he, he has divided middle age age of elizabeth puritan age periods of uh, restoration 18th century literature age of romanticism age of romanticism parts to victorian age 20th century but uh, here i have divided through this international webinar so i have divided like this the first part is that is uh, age of chaucer chaucer is age of social discontent because william langland 
Chaucer expressed their social discontent. <clears throat> and then age of Shakespeare, that is age, age of Elizabeth, can be uh, called age of conflict between Protestantism and then Roman Catholic. Puritan age, that is age of Milton, can be called age of religion. The next age of Dryden, that is the periods of restoration, can be called age of corrupt in society. Age of Pope, that is 18th century, can be called age of conflict political because we know that the conflict occurred between Whig and Tory party. Next age of Johnson, that is age of romanticism, can be called age of child labor because uh, William Blake who talked about child labor issues. Age of Wordsworth can be called Age of French Revolution. Age of Tennyson, that is the Victorian age, can be called Age of Conflict between religion and then science. So, Age of Social Discontent. So, when we read all the poetry of different, different authors who belong to different, different century and then age, they expressed social issue through their poetry. So Chaucer, who was the father of English poetry, through his poetry, he talked about social issues. And then even uh, Edmund Spencer, he talked about religion issue. Milton completely talked about religion. Dryden, corrupt in society. And then other issues about uh, Roman Catholic and then Anglican Church. Pope, the basic mannerism of society, basic mannerism of people. Samuel Johnson talking about the government, political issues, child labor. Age of Wordsworth, even though uh, during a romantic period they talked about a subjective poetry. In some of his poetry, Wordsworth talking about the French Revolution also during age of Tennyson, the advent of technology and science. We are talking about uh, science and then religion issue. T.S. Eliot <coughs> talking about modern people, the contemporary period after uh, colonial, that is, which is considered as a post-colonial period. During that period, many poets, dramatists, novelists were talking about uh, that is uh, issue of slavery, color issue, that is racism, and then war issues, lost life, everything. So, I would like to stop with this slide. In the next slide, we have a question and answer session. If you have any question, you can just chat. So guys, uh, if you have any question regarding this topic, you may ask from the, our speaker. So thank you so much for the lecture. Thank it you. was thank you. fruitful thank you, to listen to you. It was a wonderful lecture. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dear professors, in case of any question, you can just chat here. How are the modern? How are they modern? Do you mean themes or the tackled to maybe modern? Which period, sir, particularly you are speaking? Yeah, actually, Jane Astin, okay. Jane Astin is a novelist. Our topic is literature is mirror of society from Middle English to modern English poetry. Specifically, we are talking about poetry. In case if we conduct uh, any other seminar, uh, we can uh, talk about uh, only novelist. Here in this um, webinar, we are talking about only poets who are talking about society. Jane Ashton is also a wonderful writer. Yeah, Jane Ashton is also a domestic uh, novelist also. 
moreover she was also restricted to publish a book as she was a woman that's why tennison wrote a princess to defend a woman right thank you thank you for uh, question any other question so if not uh, we can go for next slide that is the uh, feedback and suggestion if you have any feedback and then suggestion you can chat here feedback suggestion also yes of course how can we encourage our students to read literature in this age yes maximum students are depending on computer they are searching anything whatever it is they are searching in computer but literature in the sense that is actually imagination imagination and then uh, we almost or uh, that is uh, 2000 we cannot say we are uh, 2000 kids but we can say 90 kids during our period computer even google search internet were not uh, not that much famous so we were uh, depending on textbook but nowadays students were uh, uh, i mean uh, they are something search in the net moreover most of the people are thinking that literature is not valuable course they are thinking like this but when they read any poetry i have heard about maximum number of my colleagues who belong to some other department they are very much interested in poetry comparing with the fiction and then drama so to encourage our students to read a literature my personal opinion is give them wordsworth short poetry wordsworth short poetry may be inspiring them any other question yes sir we have question what differentiates words with from other please yes because see from middle english age of elizabeth <coughs> puritan age next uh, age of uh, that is the restoration period neo classical period many poets were writing and following some other words during middle age that is uh, chaucer was writing maxima used latin word italian word also moreover language was difficult during edmund spencer that is elizabethan age he was writing a fairy queen uh, words were difficult milton period milton john dun period that is uh, during a puritan age milton recreated a bible that is called a paradise lost he too used uh, some greek words elevated style as it is epic he used the elevated style even language was grandier and alexander pope we don't need to discuss because he followed completely some other language such as the greek uh, italian latin as it was considered neo classical period in fact all the poets except romantic poets they used different different words and different different reference but wordsworth used a simple and a humble common people language he said language should be simple and humble he wrote a criticism the criticism name is preface to lyrical ballad so before he published a poetry he published a preface to lyrical ballad in which he was discussing about language should be a uh, man to man speaking in fact we don't need to refer any dictionary we can read it very easily moreover wordsworth poetry is natural poetry for example solitary reaper daffodil definitely students can understand easily that is my opinion uh, uh, as social changes trigger 
the ships of literary era can you pinpoint different visible changes the societal revolutionary bring forth visible changes yes literary era is actually a changing see before that i would like to share total england was uh, shattered because of struggle between uh, religion particularly protestantism and then puritanism next uh, king and then parliament during commonwealth period and then they were confusing whig and uh, tory party so visible changes social revolution bring forth uh, that's my opinion about the eras yeah what are the relation of john dun in the metaphysical john dun who belonged to john dun is considered as a father of uh, metaphysical in fact he is a uh, he is the ed which was said by samuel johnson in his work so john dun is writing metaphysical first of all we have to know about the metaphysical metaphysical is uh, beyond imagination that is extended metaphor <clears throat> extended metaphor that is uh, metaphysical beyond imagination that is that can be called extended metaphor that is concept so john dun maximum poetry is uh, extended metaphor that is he used a concept but the metaphysical uh, term was used by first time uh, john dryden later it was uh, revived and then uh, polished by samuel johnson the yeah, keats actually we don't uh, discuss the reason is because uh, wordsworth shelley john keats and then uh, lord byron everyone they talked about the maximum subjective that is uh, they were talking about the personal issue negative capability is actually a literary term in some other webinar definitely we will uh, discuss about it how can we revive term literature in our uh, young generations yes as i told you already young generation I, uh, how they concentrate on literature we don't have uh, idea because as i told you already nowadays everything has become a money oriented people even students also uh, they are selecting only a uh the yeah, the course which will be useful literature revive for young generation okay we can revive through our teaching or we can inspire them by telling about the literature that can be literature not only english that can be your own literature also but young generation it has been uh, declined that's my opinion from our side i don't have that side guys uh, i am sharing the link the feedback form link uh, please fill fill out this form and if you have any more question you can ask uh, please fill out this form in our uh, because after that you will be able to get the certificate and write your correct name and surname and you can give the feedback also if possible any other feedback you can chat okay so at the end of uh, almost sir shall we wind up yes sir oh ah, yes sir so before we wind up i would like to 
thank first of all uh, uh, adil khan sir sir thank you the national i mean the international webinar organizer um, thank you so much sir moreover i have to thank william j long whose book i referred w h hudson so both of them helped me and then uh, i would like to thank you so much sir then uh, other participants research scholar from different countries i would like to thank you all if you have any doubt can feel free to ask me uh, if possible you can get my mail id or phone number to from sir so i am ready to help you actually literature is connecting us not only internet not only a media even literature is connecting us i am from india you are all listening from different different countries really i am so happy i have to thank uh, literary people especially thank you thank you sir yeah you, sir. how can we teach poetry to our students in more engaging and funny way yes how can we teach poetry to our students uh, that is according to see even in college especially non literature students maximum easy poems are prescribed for literature students only very difficult poems are prescribed such as uh, chaucer shakespeare philip sidney i have observed many university syllabus in case of non literature students uh, very easy poems are prescribed such as h w longfellow america and then uh, mark twain uh, emerson from american literature thoreau and then wordsworth shelley keats t s eliot thomas hardy and so on w b eats and so on so it's very easy to teach them poetry first of all we have to explain them and then only we have to teach a poetry if it is maximum rhyme scheme may be easy to teach them and then we can encourage them to that is according to our mood only so it's very easy to teach a poetry so we can see it. okay sir uh, guys uh, you can get the uh, uh, soft form uh, slides of the webinar uh, you can email us and I, we will send you i'm sending our email and you can email us if you need uh, slides of the topic So this is our uh, email. So thank you so much. Thank uh, you. It was thank so you, wonderful sir. presentation. So, thank you so now, much, uh, uh, if you want to uh, go, you may go now. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. guys i am sending link of the feedback form again and again so that you can uh, fill it out and please write your correct name and your surname and you all uh, can email us for the slides of the topic we will send you
and link of the, our organization uh, pay send email sir uh, Tanzila Kesar uh, you can see our email on the screen the world literature webinars I hope you have all filled out the form. Uh, this is the email of our speaker uh, if you have any question or if you want to any ask uh, you can email him so now we are going to end this session and you all people get the certificate before uh, 16 March okay and uh, follow our Facebook page you will get the link in the description and subscribe this channel uh, for more webinars thank you so much atanji like i said you will get the certificate before uh, 16 march so now we are going to end this session thank you so much